it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Attention all passengers. Wilford Industries wishes you good morning. The temperature outside is minus 119.6 degrees Celsius. As we enter the Yukon territory of former Canada, we remind you for your personal safety, be prepared to brace. We are six years, nine months, and 26 days from departure. At the tone, the exact time will be oh, 800 hours. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we are starting a new show, and that would be called Snowpiercer. And the synopsis for this one, this episode, this first episode, is first the weather changed. It's a grisly murder stokes the the class division of Snowpiercer. Melanie deputizes a dangerous rebel to help solve the killing. Andre Layton, the world's only surviving homicide detective. Which, when you brought this up to me originally, Steve, the, I, I was like, this is interesting and it's far different from the movie. And I, you know, I was a bit skeptical at it at first, but you know, when I saw some previews and everything else, I, I was like, I really want to see this because the idea of the actual show in comparison, and I love the movie. And I am in, really intrigued. I really like the movie, uh, movie, the show. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you. I, I watched uh, I watched the first two episodes uh, of this, and that's when I I was really hooked. And I, I contacted uh, contacted you and said we got to do Snowpiercer. I, this its show is great. I I believe it's already picked up, been picked up for season two. Of course, we don't know when season two is going to happen, but it's uh, yeah, it's definitely not the movie. It's it's very different from the movie, and uh, so I, I'm excited to do this this show, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, some listeners will, will get on board and uh, follow along with us here, especially once we catch up uh, to, to everything. I mean, we'll always be a couple of weeks behind doing just one episode, but uh, it's uh, it's got 10, or what is it scheduled for? Let me see, because I don't want to make the mistake. Uh, but what did you think? So you, you liked it. I really liked it. It it really caught me because I like it's oddly enough what's reflecting of what's going on in society today. I guess and it's yeah, yeah and a little on bit. On top of that, I really liked it for the fact that the show and the movie were basically based on the French trade paperback that was out in 1982. Now that that's how, wow. how long ago I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was that long. Yeah, ago. I researched it and, and it's very interesting. A lot of good books come out of France, apparently, like Pierre Boulez, <laughs> Planet of the Apes. I'm curious of the translation from French to English, though, based on mm -hmm. and wondering if they're going and coinciding it with the actual comic run that they did or this trade paperback. Yeah, yeah. So this first season is is ten episodes is what we we've got, uh, and the, it is it is slated according to IMDb to have a season two that's also going to be ten episodes. So so I'm excited for that to know that we've got a at least a little bit of a, a show to go through. And and I you know I really really liked it. I liked oh, the concept definitely. of it. I I liked the the idea of it, and I like that we're getting some of we're going to get some well, we'll talk oh, about definitely. we'll talk about some of this stuff but I, I really really I just I just really enjoyed those first two episodes I can't wait to watch the third one can't wait to dig back into the the second episode cuz I only watched it once and uh next week when we dig into episode 2 and so uh yeah yeah I'm yeah. I'm with you and I guess we should move on to our top 5s absolutely good evening passengers be advised, track conditions will deteriorate over the next 24 hours. Well, my number five would be the backstory and how it was done was really cool and interesting. I, I can't remember how they did it in the movie, but 
the fact that you know we actually got a backstory was great to explain where they're at at this current time whereas they didn't just jump right into it and thinking oh you know everything you know yeah, it was great. I uh, in fact that was my number five as well. Is just that that whole I purposely didn't didn't go back and, and rewatch the movie because I didn't want to have have a comparison. Now I may at some point here once we get into the series go back and watch the movie itself again just to just to see what uh, what they do differently. Yeah. Because I I don't remember. I'm with you. I don't remember if the movie explains anything or if it just dives you right into the world uh, situation that it is. Uh, I love that they use that that little anime switching back and forth from anime into yeah. real live action there to kind of show us what happened when they're like the scientists tried to cool the earth and they made it too cool. So now everything is just frozen over. So, yeah, I'm uh, totally with you. That was my number five as well. Just that uh, getting that little bit of backstory that we got there at the beginning. Yeah, they that man actually purposely caused an ice age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did not know what they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, my number four would be the classifications within the episode. Uh, obviously, those that were not of wealth were not in the middle or in the front cars of the train. And seeing how the poor were pretty much oppressed on the train itself. Very similar to the movie and how everybody was, but at least we got the backstory of why they were put into the back cars because apparently there was an insurgence of everybody just trying to get on the train and they just they yeah threw them in the yeah. back that was it well it looked like to me that those were like the baggage cars because if you if you look and, and obviously we don't know all of, of what happened you know after immediately after people got onto the train but it really looked like it was kind of like the baggage cars that yeah. they were getting into and we see, you know, we see the third class section and we see the first class section. We haven't really seen the, the second class section. So we don't know what that in between is. So we know we know there's at least third, at least three classes. And it seems like third class is the lowest class of ticketed passengers because that's what what everybody from the back is trying to get to. So, if, you know, we'll make you third class if you do this. Yeah. And and that kind of thing. So it's uh, yeah, it, it was it was interesting. And I hope we get a little bit more of that of them just showing us kind of how the whole thing was was set up. And and I think I've got this later in my notes. But uh, uh, yeah, I that was a it was really good to kind of get at least a little bit of a glimpse of the two different sides there. See, my number four is just that that beginning that when she tells us the train's been, been traveling for over six years, there's this whole it, it was interesting to see the whole setup of rations there that that when the, at the beginning they bring this this cart of rations and they they notice that there's less of them than there were before. And so it was really kind of interesting that they're like, well, this is all you get. And these tailies, as they're as they're called, I'm interested to see how that society was built, because because like you, you're just talking about the whole classification of, of people. And I wonder if they took a census or how they knew um, kind of like how many of them there are, what kind of their skills are, because remember, they tell us that old Ivan was brought forward because he was the only person who could tune a piano and mm -hmm. that nobody else had piano wire. They hadn't thought to bring to bring piano wire. So how did they find out that Ivan knew how to tune a piano? You know, did, did they go back and just ask what in like with with Layton? He later says that, oh, his ex-girlfriend told them that he was a homicide detective. So they didn't just know it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was that was really interesting there uh, that we, we don't really know how kind of the negotiations were set up because obviously somebody had to come back initially when this train started rolling six years ago and they had to go, okay, we're not going to throw you off the train. We're going to let you stay here. We're going to get the baggage or whatever is in these cars. We're going to, you're going to be contained to these cars here. We're going to bring you bricks of rations. Um, you don't have to do anything. Uh, like the, the one woman says in the next, actually it's in the, I think it's in the episode two when she says, you know, you don't have to do anything except not rebel. And uh, so uh, it's interesting. I wonder if we're going to see those negotiations, if they're going to, going to show it to us at all or if we're just going to be kind of left to our own kind of thoughts thoughts well, on that. Well, it, it makes me think that there was no negotiations, more of interrogations than anything. Well, there had to be some there had to be something to set up. To, yeah, yeah, how did they 
<clears throat> get to know these people in, in some respects they because they impeded on this train that was meant yeah i mean idealistically they, for these these rich people or middle right. class people and right. and they must see them as uh peasants or peons or what have you yeah. and felt that okay well we need to know where they're coming from how can we utilize them in some respects right Exactly. Exactly. So, so it'd be interesting to see if we get any of that, if they show us kind of over the years and, you know, they talk about how there was other rebellions, how this is the second or the third rebellion, something like that. So. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. My, my number three would be, uh, the rats and how they were being used for what I guess was food. Uh, the, the kid was, uh, capturing them and showing them to his father. Yeah. That I, I, I was with you on that. When I saw this note and I was rewatching watching it yesterday, the episode I saw where the kid, because like they, they dole out the rations and, and like everybody gets a bar, but then they start cutting them up and they go, okay, everybody's got to give a percentage yeah. for the rats. So you got to give a percentage like strong boy, that, that one guy who was the big guy, exactly. you know, he gets a full ration because he needs, he needs to have his strength. And so I, that's the impression I got is that the rats they had to be using them for food. And I think, in one of the episodes, I think Leighton says something like that. Mm. But the the other question is, is how are the rats on there to begin with? There must have been, so they must have been brought, you know, how are the rats even on the train? Well, how, how like did to, they get to, a whole aquarium in that train is my question. Well, I mean, <laughs> but no, that stuff was set up. No, but I'm saying that, that stuff was specifically set up for those yeah those cars but the rats seem to be just kind of running free and so they had to be in those back cars you know while the train was being built and they just never because it got cold and that's how and they they yeah, yeah and they found their way in there and in the the train people who were building the train and building the track just didn't bother to get rid of them when you know before they i guess well, at least it becomes it just, an it alternate would... food source for them they could have wrap burgers or something right you know? <laughs> exactly exactly uh, um, the, uh, and also you know the the overall investigation and how they get andre to be involved within yeah. the investigation he definitely is the lead character as well as melanie as we know is jennifer Connolly, which i'm so happy we have so for my, my number three is just that, that the first time I watched this, I missed the discussion about the old man's arm. This is where they mentioned that there's been three rebellions prior to this time. And we see that the old man has this stump of an arm and we don't know yet. It's, I think it's in the next episode where we're going to see how they, how they remove those arms. But I thought that was interesting. That fact that, that there's been three previous rebellions. And I think, uh, one of the, the characters says like 62 people were have been killed over the course of the six years, mm. or I think Leighton said like the year three or the year four rebellion, you know, so many people were killed, something like that. So it's, it's interesting that they've had kind of these, these, and they, and I remember I have flashes of memories from the movie, the movie. I remember them talking about that in the movie that, that they would attempt these things every few years. Uh, and it was a way kind of, of, you know, of, of getting rid of these, uh, what do they call them? People who, who, uh, are illegally on a train stowaways, Pretty yeah, much kind of stowaways, stowaway, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And that will lead me to my number two. Yeah. And that would be Andre protecting his people in the rear cars. You know, they started that fight, but only got through, I think one car. Whew. There was so much military on that train. It was, you could, you could tell they were prepared. And, you know, it, it just reminded me of, like, what what's going on today. But regardless, mm -hmm. it's like, wow. They yeah, that, that police force is in, like, the two guards um, that are that are sitting outside. And I guess they, they have to have round-the-clock shifts to make sure these this, these tailies don't, don't break through the doors or whatever. So they have these guards there. And, you know, they're, they're counting how long it takes for the doors to open and how long yeah. the doors close for and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's, it is interesting that they definitely had a lot of security. They knew they were going to need security on this, this train and whether they knew that before the, the tailies got jumped on or whether since then they've gone through and found people to, to, you know, to join the security staff. I'm not sure, but, mm. 
Um, I thought that was interesting that, uh, so my number two is kind of the, I thought it was really cool that Andre recognizes that the blonde girl, that she was, she was actually a policeman. Cause he like tells, he looks at Roche uh, rash or whatever the guy's name is. And he mm-hmm. says, you weren't a policeman. Cause he can tell that he wasn't a policeman. And, but he, he can tell that the woman was a policeman, but that she couldn't have been more than like one year out of her rookie, uh, out of being a rookie. And she says that she wanted to be a homicide detective. I just thought, I just thought it's cool that that we see this in TV shows and in movies that uh, cops can kind of recognize each other. You know, even if they're not in uniform, or if they're not doing that, that Andre can tell that she's a that she was a, actually a police officer. I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, and I, I love when the kid shows. Layton's worldly possessions uh, to his mom and uh, you know, his badge is in there. And I noticed that there was a spoon, a spoon was one of his worldly possessions. I thought that was interesting that, 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 that was the thing the kid was going to keep safe was his badge, his spoon. And there was a couple of other things that I, 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 I tried to freeze frame it, but I couldn't see everything that was in the, that little wrapped up bundle he had. Yeah. <laughs> My number one would be the just the overall start of the show. I'm mm-hmm. glad that you actually had suggested this show. It is so interesting. Very similar to the movie, but apparently the story is from years past mm-hmm. based on what the trade paperback went over. I'm not sure how far in the run it went or, you know, how long how many pages it was but Mm -hmm. you know an overall good story in my opinion and it started off very well very cool yeah i had the same the same kind of thing right number one i just i love the season and i I think i told you before we we started watching this that i kind of years and years ago i used to to, uh, try to write fiction and stuff and i had the idea kind of like a demolition man kind of idea of a society that doesn't know anything about murder and they suddenly have a string of murderers and they have to, you know, unthaw or kind of bring somebody from the past kind of in there to solve a murder for them because none of their policemen know how to solve a murder. So I I really like this idea, this concept of that they they didn't even think they were going to need police detectives. Yeah. On this train. And I, I thought it was interesting that the policeman types are called brakemen. Hmm. I, I didn't know what that was supposed to mean or what that what that's supposed to indicate. But he says that to them about he keeps calling them brakemen. And, and uh, I was a little confused about that. So hmm. uh, I had a couple of, of quotes that I really liked. Uh, I like when they're in the first class kind of dining car and uh, they're they're talking about what happened. And the one woman says it's nothing but track talk which I guess is, is the new parlance for gossip. And, uh, and then when she's complaining about having to go back there, Melanie tells her, well, you love an excuse to wear your fur. And so uh, I thought that was really cool that that thought that she has to put on this fur to go back there, but yet everybody else is just wearing what looks like normal clothes. Like it looks like the Tailies have gotten used to the cold maybe cause they're not super bundled up. I mean, they're not, they're obviously not like they're not wearing shorts and, and, uh, running around with their shirts off, but they're, they're not, they don't look like they have any extra clothes. They don't, they don't look like they're shivering, you know? So I thought that was kind of cool. I loved when Andre had kind of the back and forth about football. The guy asked him, uh, do you, do you know what the difference is between football footballers and, uh, and policemen? And Andre says, you mean soccer? <laughs> I just thought it's just so American to, to when you're talking to someone from Europe or, or from uh, where they where they call it football, they call soccer football, and the, the American kind of kind of says, "You mean soccer?" Like like it's a it just it just made me laugh that that thought that we still have this this kind of back and forth going on there. Hmm. Yeah, we got some notes, some things that we hadn't discussed. Uh, you just kind of want to go back and forth. Yeah, definitely. With you it. go first. I love that we have a man praying there at the beginning while the woman is singing. So I love this. A lot of times these futuristic shows kind of just don't even show us religion or they have some sort of weird religions. They don't, that are, are not really anything like uh, what we have today. So it was really kind of cool to see that there's still some sort of religion going on. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. And we all need religion at that <laughs> given time when they're stuck on a train like mm-hmm. that in the cold. Well, Mine would go to the original, the very beginning, the animation for mm-hmm. the history of how the Snowpiercer was created and by whom. I just let, love that whole anime style, the yeah. way it came into being, and, and it just moved into live action at that point. It, it actually worked well 
with the way it actually, it, you know, way it visualized. Yeah, very cool. And I, I we didn't really talk a lot about it, but the, the just that we, we get a little glimpse into the geopolitics kind of of what's going on. We see the one woman, you know, she's complaining about the Europeans are body shaming the mm. Americans. And, you know, then the, we have this Mr. Wolford who's really running things, but there's some sort of committee that still meets and, and makes decisions. So, you know, we have this sort of, it's, it's almost like if, I don't even know if we have anything today that we even be able to compare it to. It's, it, it's, it's almost like a scaled down, like privatization, but you still have the different world governments kind of things or hmm. maybe i don't know i i I, th- I just thought it was interesting that they, they talked about this committee and what uh, what they're going to discuss there hmm. um, my next one would be that that cool train car with the living aquarium in it <laughs> i know, yeah. know i brought it up earlier but you know we see the lady getting the lobster and fish for dinner that yeah. was pretty cool the way they had it laid out that thing is huge yeah yeah and it looked like she was naked man it oh she was naked so, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I thought it was interesting when we when we see when Leighton is first inter- introduced to the the new area of the train, they bring him food and he, and they say he's in the third class mess hall. And if you've ever traveled by train, it looks like the actual like old style dining car mm-hmm. of a train. You yeah, know where there's little where there's little booths and tables for you to sit at there. And and so I, I was really kind of intrigued by that. They had to empty that third class mess hall out and then the difference between the third class mess hall and that that huge dining room with all the the nice i don't know if they were candles or just lights on the tables and everybody with nice tablecloths and you know all the the nice stuff in that in that one and he's got this like you know plate with a sandwich and and tomato soup so (laughs) and he wanted more (laughs) yeah and they wouldn't give it to him yeah (laughs) he's like more no oh okay (laughs) I'm just going to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> so you already talked a little bit about the graphic novel. Mm-hmm. So let's, uh, I'll just run through these last few ones I've got real quick. Uh, I love seeing Stephen Ogg. As soon oh, as okay. I saw him, yeah. I knew who he was. And I was like, that's Stephen Ogg. That's so cool. So cool to see him. There was another little quick reference that the guy who's taking care of the drawers, the people in the drawers, he talks about the notary. He says, well, you know, it's, it takes them a long time to wake up and we have to get the notary. And so I thought that was, that was an interesting thing. I wonder if we're going to see some more of, of these kind of different, like you talked about kind of the, uh, the classifications of people. And uh, I love seeing that the kid as the music is playing and he's like on, he's got like the keyboards laid out. Uh, scratched into the bed frame there and he's like playing the piano kind of as the music is playing i thought that was really cool you could see that ivan has been teaching him to play the piano even though he doesn't have a, a piano. piano there yeah. yeah and then of course it's sad that that ivan uh, hangs himself there uh, and uh, that little girl i didn't really i couldn't understand what was going on the first time i watched it so the second time i really tried to pay attention to it that uh, strong boy it looked like he ripped that guy's arm off oh yeah like, i don't i don't know if he actually had like a knife or something it looks like he just ripped it out and then the little girl picks it up and and runs to the the door to, to open the door it was just so gruesome to see this little kid carrying this severed arm uh <laughs> you know through the train car that uh that i thought was oh that's just, just and horrible. it makes you think was that like intentional did did they intend oh i'm sure that him? was the plan oh no and yeah that, that way the little kid just like yeah just open it up okay. yeah i'm sure that was the plan that she was all along that was what she was supposed to do like she knew her part of the plan was that she would be able to be small enough to sneak in there while the fighting is going on but like you said unfortunately they only as soon as she opens the door more cops oh yeah and in. they couldn't get any further and yeah ugh. yeah and then they take the one girl hostage and then layton's got yeah that that whole thing was just very tense so. oh very intense and you know, and the blood too that was involved. That was a lot of so blood. This yeah. is definitely a uh, cable show, and it should be on late at night. <laughs> it's definitely a violent show. Yeah, yeah. I think MLSV or whatever they the different classifications are. They said all the that you know mature language and strong violence is was there. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, so yeah. we didn't get any feedback this week. Nope. Hopefully we'll get some feedback on Snowpiercer. I, I hope people enjoy this. Uh, oh, definitely. This and show. if you guys are watching this on YouTube or listening, and you have access to Facebook, you know, send your you know comments and leave them below. And please give us a thumbs up, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But 
uh, my thoughts on uh, the episode as a whole, I would say I'm really loving the show. It, it has me intrigued. I look forward to the next episode. Obviously, I didn't skip ahead. You already saw the second episode, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'll be watching it like two or three times. Yeah, oh, I'm going to watch it a few more times uh, for sure, for sure, because uh, the, the, episode two is good also. But I, like I said, I only watched it once, and it was about a week or two ago, probably two weeks ago now, the way we're recording. So Yeah. But I'm excited. I, I really I really like the show. I like the concept of the show. I like seeing Jennifer Connelly. I, I love, and I, don't, I think I, I, I skipped over this one in my notes, but I love the fact that as soon as Leighton hears her voice, he says, oh, you're the voice of the train. Yes. And and she's like, well, I'm hospitality. <laughs> she yeah, is no I, I, that's, that's one of those quotes that I missed that I should put in. But yeah, I, yeah. I love that, that, <laughs> uh, that she's the, you're the voice of the train. So that was, that was really, really cool. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the rest of this series and, uh, and everything uh, going forward. So yeah, I'm really pleased. Awesome. So with Comic Talk, there's really not much going on. There's so many rumors and everything that's going on. Uh, obviously, AMC is unsure of their reopening, so we're still in a state of limbo, but it, it has me fearful. But drive-ins are still out there, and you could always go see a movie yeah. if need be. Also, comic book shops have reopened. My local store reopened, thankfully, and they have my pull list, and thankfully, I got my stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I on. picked up a, I picked up a few comics uh, a week or so ago, and they called me, and they've got one one other issue in that I need to go pick up at my local local place. But uh, yeah, finally, comics are back, being reprinted and being or being printed and being sent out because that was the thing that my uh, local comic book shop when I called them and asked, they were like, "Well, we don't know when they're going to start printing comics and sending them out again." So yeah. Yeah, and thankfully they're open. Yeah. I was able to snag myself. Uh, we already spoke about it previously on a previous episode about Namor coming back, and mm -hmm. Jerry Ordway had inked the most recent new re envisioning of Namor for Marvel. Nice. And I like that, so I picked that up. I didn't get to see Jerry. Apparently he was in there a few days before, and I didn't snag a signed copy, but uh, the fact that, you know, he's still working, he's doing his thing, and on top of that, we got cool comics to read. I actually picked up a couple of facsimiles of a few comics that I had when I was younger that, you know, as we all know, comics degrade over time based on paper and everything. So this is like an actual current idea or facsimile. It's an actual reprint on the way they actually oh, print out cool. comics now at yeah. base. Very cool. So uh, we, I have a podcast recommendation that would be Strange Indeed with Rima yeah. on the podcast can network. I, I believe she's going to start doing just random episodes of Black Mirror is what she's announced. And I don't know when those will start coming out or who the uh, the co-hosts will be for those. But, yeah, I absolutely loved being on Strange Indeed a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to keep pushing TV podcast industries. They're covering Penny Dreadful, City of Angels, and I call them every week and, and leave them a, a voicemail. And, uh, they in fact, they have a patron that I, I think I, I think I chipped them off a dollar or two a month to their to their Patreon. And they just they're doing a, a review of Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So I rewatched Captain America, the Winter Soldier last night and sent them a voicemail for that one. And I hadn't watched, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the Marvel movies, but I'm not like a super <laughs> fan. Of, I, I haven't watched all of He's them. He's not me, everybody. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't know all the connections, but I, I did catch that the Winter Soldier is the, is the movie where Captain America tell, asks Nick Fury to trust him, and Nick Fury says, the last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. An eye. Yep. And he's referring to that whole <laughs> Captain Marvel with the cat thing. So I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, a lot of things I had forgotten about in, yeah, in that movie. Yeah, you forgot about Batrock being in it. Um, who? Batrock. Who's that? Who's that? The little skilled... He was supposed to, in the comic books. He was a French like acrobat, and he's the one that Cap fights on the boat. Oh, and he puts oh, the shield down. Gotcha. Okay, that's yeah. yeah. I didn't know who the what the character name. That's Batroc. What? The, okay. That was the first idea of like, oh, we get to see another character. So that that was pretty cool in that movie. Obviously, yeah. we get the whole Hail Hydra and all that good stuff mm -hmm. and, with Robert Redford. Yeah, and and, and yeah, and, and we we see the fall of Shield in 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 this. In the Winter Soldier, there's a lot of stuff that happened in the Winter Soldier. Yeah, that... which pretty much set up. If you guys did not, uh, listeners out there have not watched Agents of Shield. They are back with the new season, but that's how Agents of Shield actually started. Was just after this movie. Oh, nice! I didn't so, know. That. Yeah, 
Very cool. Yeah, but it was really good. There's like I said, there's a lot of things that I had forgotten about with it, and so it was cool to see that again. To see the origin of Falcon uh, as well was was really cool, and uh, to hear Peggy Carter talk about her husband. <laughs> and uh, that was that was really cool because all the speculation we have now after Endgame, oh, and yeah. that that kind of thing. So so yeah, very very cool to to revisit that. So I, I encourage everybody uh, to check out TV Podcast Industries, and also we have to go back. Lost revisited. They are back. They are finishing up season three of Lost. Uh, so they're back with a vengeance. They had a, they interviewed MC Ganey. And uh, they had a great episode that I just finished uh, before Mark and I started recording here. So I'm looking forward to watching the next episode of Lost and sending them some feedback as well. Awesome. No YouTube recommendations this week? None. Uh, Yeah, everybody knows what I would recommend. So Grim Life Collective, go check them out. (laughs) So we would love to get any sort of feedback uh, from you guys. If you want to talk to us about Snowpiercer, Snowpiercer the movie, Snowpiercer episode one, or we'll be recording Snowpiercer episode two next week please please send that in you can find us uh, panels to pixels podcast.com you can find us on facebook as panels to pixels you can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to is spelled out right there in the middle the number one at gmail.com you can call us if you want to use your phone for something other than recording a voicemail and you can actually call us <laughs> or uh, eight, four, eight, yeah, eight, four, five, three, five, zero, two, zero, nine, five. We are also on YouTube. In fact, I believe the episode usually releases on YouTube earlier than anywhere else. And uh, that's just panels to pixels podcast on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up there, follow us, subscribe and check it out. But uh, send us some feedback. Let us know what you thought of Snowpiercer or if you don't like it, if you didn't like Snowpiercer, let us know about that too. If there's something exactly. else you want us to recover recover something to cover (laughs) exactly or you could actually rate us on podchaser if you'd like so just go to podchaser.com and you could give us a review there if you'd like as well we're we're listed yeah so and where else can everybody else hear us well i'm a co-host on the walking dead talk through with brian malosh on talk through media and with that podcast we actually review the walking dead each week this show panels the pixels will always be on the next level podcast network but there will always be a link for talk through media for others to listen to as well on our facebook page so listen to me on the walking dead talk through fear the walking dead talk through let's talk through or even the other one that hasn't come out yet (laughs) but uh which will be about the world beyond so uh those podcasts will come out when those shows are in production and actually have episodes up so listen to us on talkthroughmedia.com apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts we are currently working a lot of things also for this particular network so uh this podcast i I should say not network the network is doing well so you know keep in touch here on our facebook group like steve mentioned or just send us an email there you go and you can hear my voice uh, right here, of course. And, and as I spoke earlier, I do send voicemails to various other podcasts. You can hear me pop up on on things. You know, right now with the world situation, there's not that much new out there. So that's why I'm very excited for this Snowpiercer. It's, it's something new. It's something we're able to watch. Exactly. And with new content comes new fun. Absolutely. And that's, how I, that's what I think about it. So we're here to entertain you during these times. I hope you ever, everyone is staying safe, staying calm and collective. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. So with that, that's our show, everyone. Thanks for everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>